Dewey Robertson is a retired real estate appraiser in Roanoke, Virginia. During a recent checkup, a doctor treating him for prostate cancer discovered another serious problem. When he went to the urologist in February of 2003, he was complaining to him of an, of an abdominal pain, pain in his lower abdomen. And he was pushing down and moving around. I said, that feels a little bit tender. And so he went back and checked it some more. And he said, that feels like a mass. And the urologist thought he could feel a mass there and sent him for a CAT scan. Indeed, there was a mass that was eventually found to be in the colon. Mr. Robertson underwent surgery within a month and cancerous tumors were removed. Then came the start of chemotherapy to kill any microscopic cancer cells that might have been left behind. But chemotherapy can also damage normal cells. When these are in the intestine, side effects can include diarrhea. So he started on his chemotherapy in March. And he did poorly with it from the standpoint of chemotherapy-induced diarrhea. He had a little bit of diarrhea with the first treatment. It gave me enough notice that I could use it to find the bathroom. And um, I did not mess my clothes. I got close to it, but I didn't mess my clothes. And um, but when I had to go, I had to make tracks. I couldn't dilly-dally. Well, chemotherapy-induced diarrhea is clearly different than other types of diarrhea. It has two or three major components. One of them is that there's injury to the cells themselves, there's injury to the gut cells, and this injury results in an output of fluid into the gut. That's called secretion. And then in an attempt to repair or, or cover up the injured surface, um, there is an exudate. Just like when somebody gets a burn and there's exudation, that's what we call it, where the fluid just leaks out. So it's a secretory and an exudative diarrhea, and then as part and parcel of that, you get increased transit. There's less time for fluids to be resorbed while they're going through the gut. Sometimes, standard medicines can bring effective relief. If somebody's having one or two loose movements a day, uh, the standard therapy uh, is to give uh, a drug called Imodium. Um, and uh, that can be given up to eight tablets in a day. And if that brings prompt relief for the diarrhea, you may be okay. But Mr. Robertson wasn't doing okay. The diarrhea was getting worse as the chemotherapy continued. The third uh, treatment is when I, it got so bad, I decided that if it's going to be like this, I don't want to do it. By the end of the third treatment, he was having what we consider grade four or, or grade three to four chemotherapy-induced diarrhea, eight to ten bowel movements a day, abdominal cramps, and was miserable. And he said to me, he said, Dr. Rosanoff, I'm out of here. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm through. Dr. Rosanoff thought he had a solution, one that might prevent Mr. Robertson from calling a halt to his chemotherapy. I explained to him that there was a new agent called sandostatin LAR, which is a long-acting octreotide, a hormone a therapy that reduces secretion, exudation of the gut, reduces the fluid production in the gut, and also reduces the speed with which fluid goes in the, go in the gut. And it's long-acting. We can give it once every four weeks. And, and that, 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 in my experience, had brought good control of the symptoms and, in fact, allowed people to continue on therapy with a good quality of life. And uh, he said, I'll give you a try, Doc. I'll, I'll give you a chance to do that. The medication did not bring complete relief, but it helped a great deal. It did help me. It slowed things down to the point that I thought they were within reason. I enjoy uh, everything I did before. I try to do my little dab of work once in a while, and um, I have a boat, and I go boating. I fish a little bit. Uh, try to drown a worm or a minnow or something. Other than that, uh, I just, uh, my normal activities. Not only is Mr. Robertson's diarrhea under good control, but he decided to stick with his full chemotherapy regimen. I kept the dose and the schedule the same. I've seen him as recently as last week. He was receiving his chemotherapy in the office, doing well and indicating to me that he did have to take the occasional Imodium or Lomodal, not very often, 
but he was very happy with the way he was doing with his treatments, and I feel there's an excellent prospect of him completing the treatment on time, at full dose, and to achieve full benefit.